Concern is mounting over the number of infections and deaths South Africa is recording on a daily basis. And in particular, the worry is for the KwaZulu-Natal province. The province's numbers are rapidly rising and at some point this week it recorded almost 6,000 new infections out of 11,800 in the country. We are joined now by Premier Sihle Zigalala via Skype. Now, uh, Premier, thank you very much for your time. You're live on ENCA. Now, healthcare workers are increasingly testing positive for COVID-19. Some of them are actually even losing their lives. Is the case that in provinces, uh, public sector and public hospitals are coping? Yes. Uh, thanks for having us uh, in your program. We are quite worried about the state of affairs. The increase in the number of uh, healthcare workers who are getting infected. But I can safely say that our healthcare system is still having sufficient capacity to handle the situation. While we cannot undermine the fact that uh, even if it is a single healthcare worker, we get affected. And in this case, we are talking about a number of people who have dedicated themselves into the service of the nation who get infected. But we have a number with bad capacity. We still have capacity in terms of the staff, but we are also uh, looking, trying to ensure that we look after those who get infected so that they will be also, they will recover as soon as possible. Mm. What about infrastructure and shortage of uh, equipment, for instance? We spoke to Donosa about an hour ago on this show here on ENCA, and they were saying that equipment shortage is a problem, infrastructure is a problem. ENCA also had its own program that showed, for instance, that Addington Hospital is in dire need of an infrastructure upgrade. Of course, there are old hospitals like your Addington Hospital, your King Edward Hospital, where the infrastructure uh, is old and it needs to be upgraded. If you will talk about Eddington, we must admit we have lift, lifts that are not functional and there are very few that are functional. We are attending to that and the department is working around the clock to ensure that that situation is addressed. But in a number of hospitals, the situation is fine, the conditions are good, the Dinosa and how are part of us and we are working as a collective in ensuring that we intervene in all areas where there are problems. We must not also be defensive as government. None of us ever expected that we will be hit by a pandemic of this nature. And therefore, our healthcare system is maybe taking time to respond sufficiently to what is envisaged. But it is not a fact that it is cracking or facing challenges. We might not have reached a high level uh, because of obtaining challenges such as the old infrastructure and others. Mm. Now, we've had a, a first wave before in winter of 2020. Uh, now we're in our second wave, and obviously there's a lot of concern. Would you agree with some critics who say that government had time to make sure that the health system is more ready, that infrastructure development, for instance, is made a priority and has wasted time in terms of that? Now COVID-19 seems to be showing the cracks. So you are just about that. That point is only advanced by the critics who do not want to get into the situation and be involved. I must start by saying, during the time of the first wave, we responded. We even built the temporal infrastructure in a form of your field hospitals. And thereafter, we realized that no, we were not experiencing the high number of uh, admissions. And that was countrywide. And then some of that infrastructure had to be taken down and we had to uh, get out of agreements that were uh, established with some of those pro service providers. Even the AG went to an extent of saying the infrastructure that was installed during the first uh, wave was not necessary. So that compelled government to withdraw that, and all of a sudden there is this second wave, 
and we are trying to respond to that again. We are now re-establishing and repurposing some of the hospital to meet this challenge that we are facing. Mm -hmm. People would say that the government is very reactionary, Premier, um, uh, to what you've just alluded now. Uh, but also, do you know how many people are admitted in, in your hospitals in KZN and how many are in ICU in particular? We, we do release those uh, reports. We know how many people are admitted. As we have said that by yesterday, we had uh, about uh, 6,000 cases. But we know that in terms of the ICU bed, we have more than 50% capacity to handle the ICU patients. And we know that we still have a capacity. We have repurposed more than 540 beds, especially for Etegwini, Ilembe, and Irikwana. We are still well in Nkungunluvu, so our affected areas are covered. Yes, the number of admissions is increasing, but the capacity is still there. Mm. Premier, I want to move from uh, one pandemic to another. We're moving now from the coronavirus pandemic to the violence uh, pandemic, if I can call it that. Uh, in KZN and Shellcross, we uh, told the story of two people being beheaded in a suburb of Shellcross in broad daylight. Uh, KZN has a history of violence, taxi violence, for instance. There's also uh, the, the political killings that have been taking place there. What are we doing wrong? What is it that KZN needs to do to improve? I think mentally what we need to do is to uproot and deal with the culture of violence, a culture of solving problems through violence. We need to deal with that in a dedicated approach that will inculcate uh, the values of Ubuntu, but also understanding that we must be proactive in dealing with problems. For instance, the problem of Shadros needed a situation where we deal with the issue of drugs and drug laws. And that is what we deal with. Also for communities to take the law into their hands was uncalled for, and what they did was quite bad. Mm. Have you spoken, for instance, to the minister, Peggy Tele, about what happened in that province this week? Probably this is something that needs national attention, uh, coming to, for instance, vigilante attacks as well as drug issues in the province. Of course, we are in touch with the minister. I'm hoping that he will be with us soon to deal with that situation. He is, of course, working with us through the SAPS to ensure that they give us the support. And I'm sure that that case is going to get a serious and intensive investigation. Mm. Well, thank you very much. That is KZN Premier Sihle Zigalala speaking to us there about issues facing his province. Now, still to come after.